the comforter has come. Tell your neighbor, the comforter has come. Yeah, that comforter is not the preacher. But last Sunday, our speaker, Reverend Petronila, spoke to us about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And we learned that the Holy Spirit, actually, when it baptizes, the initial setup is that you are able to speak in tongues. You are able to experience God in a new way. You are baptized once. But what does it really mean for when we talk about the Comforter has come? Did Christ send the Holy Spirit just to come once on believers? Or what was he to do? He was to comfort the people and walk with them. So this morning, or this afternoon, I want to speak to us, the Comforter has come, in the perspective of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit was to come and dwell among us, to transform us and to walk with us. But before we get there, I want us to imagine that maybe you have a motor engine, the engine that you drives your car or your father drives or your neighbor, okay, or the vehicles or the automobile you see. A great engine, just imagine of a powerful machine. But it's not oil, it's not fuel, it's not ignited. Does that engine serve any purpose? Does it? It doesn't. And that is how it can be for a believer who Christ has actually called or either is baptized and now he has made his way to his home or her home, but yet is not oil and set in motion. The comforter has come. He wants to walk with us every day. He wants to see impact in believers. It has been said that after the powerful worship, and by the way, I should mention this, I may forget. Please, let's support our own brother Kigame as you go out. He's part of us. While you are away, Professor, we also mentioned you. And we were very proud to say this church is the only church in Eldoret that has two presidential aspirants. Next time, we'll have a president. Amen. Amen. Yes. Our own Professor Kiapi and uh, our brother Ruben. They are our bona fide members of this church. And we are privileged to have people who have tested the waters of being pres president. Amen. So what I was going to say before I get, getting carried away, you know, we are able to gossip Professor when he was away, is that please let's promote the merchandise of our, our brother Ruben. By the fact that he's our member, I don't give him anything. But you bless him because he eats from where he sows. Amen. 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 Hey, kama kuna jua, kuna messages, it should come. The comforter has come. Things must be set in motion. So, the engine must be set and oil to go into motion. We are going to just have one main scripture, John chapter 14, verse 26. And this we have read several times, but I will read it in three different versions so that you get what I want to put across. John chapter 14, verse 26, the NIV version says, the ad, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and we remind you of everything I have said to you. You need to take note of, he will teach you of all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. The, the New King James Version says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. But now, the King James Version of the same passage says, and this is where I took my topic, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So you get to notice here that we are talking about the Helper, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit that is going to come. And he's supposed to do some things and or many things and actually all things to us that we become full of him and walk with him. But again, I want us to read another text in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 to 19. The passage says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, 
hymns and song from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, being filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not, it's not a, some people have said it's a ghost, it's a mysterious. But he has a way of working. And one of the things that if you looked at the passages we have read, we are seeing the word comforter denoting the same as helper, denoting the same as advocate, coming to all believers and performing certain functions. So the infilling of the Holy Spirit in its sense, it is not that it will just be something that will, it's supposed to do some certain things in you in terms of filling. As I mentioned earlier, baptism is once, as Reverend said, you get baptized and you speak in tongues once, it's a nice thing. But in feeling of the comfort of the Holy Spirit who has come, it's a continuous and constant aspect. Every day we come before God, you hunger and long for him in Jesus' name. For many of you who have come to church, every day you come. I love some churches, think we need also to put this in our liner that you not live the same way you have come. I don't know what people normally mean, but there are some churches, that is the liner. Every day, maybe we need to add it. You not live the same way you've come. Say amen. Because there is an infilling of the Holy Spirit that comes to believers every time they enter the presence of God. And they should never assume to be full. Because there are some of you that God has filled with the Holy Spirit and you are too full again to accept any more of the Holy Spirit of God. The comforter has come. Maybe he will bring some discomfort to us. God desires us that we look unto him and never get full. In fact, when Jesus is speaking to the disciples, the disciples had just had the epitome and the apex of the experience with the master. He had lived with them, both as God man and God, God the Father, no, well, the God incarnate, okay? in both aspects, but he's telling them that there is still more that is coming. What is that meaning? Is please be anticipatory to that move. Amen. You have not seen it yet. You have not seen it yet as a child of God. So we need to be full of the Holy Spirit. We need to desire the feeling of the Holy Spirit, but we should never assume that we are full of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When the comforter comes, one of the things that I look here is that he pervades his holy and glorious presence in every chamber, in every nook, in every secluded corner of a believer. God cannot be living in our hearts or feeling us that we speak in tongues and yet he does not transform the whole of our lives. Amen? This is where some of the prosperity gospel, I think, have misled people. You know, they say, go with this handkerchief to cause power. But let me tell you, truth be say that you can be full of the Holy Spirit until when you pass certain places. When I say, I'm going up, praise the Lord. One as we son. God desires to be very full that every time you walk certain corner, they say, Elder Agnes was here. This is the feeling we're talking about. And I said in the first service, and I should repeat in this place, that we need to get at a place as a church. We are having a watchtower or the watch of prayers 24 hours. Amen? That during this service, we have actually have given them a room. I don't know whether this is happening. We say that we need to be having people in a room. When us, we are starting work here, they come for the first service, Okay, during the first service, people are there. They are praying the whole of that two-hour service. After that, the others go, because that is their ministry. And then we have taken a day. If you have not taken a day, we have said, take a day in a year that you are going to pray and fast. Because we want a place whereby even our soldiers who are at the gate and the people who are out there, they will say, we are longing to be in the presence of God. The feeling of the Holy Spirit that goes beyond us feeling with the Holy Spirit inside our hearts and we feel good alone. Amen. One as well, son. You know, when you eat good food, we, where we come from, food matters. Huh? 
except when I'm fasting. Now, um, when you eat good food and you are satisfied, you'll always smile from the restaurant. And people say you are good. Amen. If God feeds our heart, then we must be able to see the results thereof in our work and everything that we do. And that is the feeling of the Holy Spirit. It pervades every chamber, every nook, and every place. He controls affection, every thought, every utterance, and every action. I'm taking you to the higher level of seeing the feeling of the Holy Spirit from just a mere emotionalism. You know, there are many of us when we believe and think that being filled with the Holy Spirit is rolling down and going there. It is something that goes higher. It controls you in the way you are able to feel, in the way you think, in the way you speak, in the way you act. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in Acts chapter 6, when the church was growing in number, and they selected the six men that they in order to may serve the tables and the apostles will be able to consider the word, that go and choose the spirit-filled men. The assumption is, and the, actually the interpretation is, that when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are controlled to make what we call judicious decisions. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I chair the meeting of my advisories. One of the things I pray is God to fill me with the Holy Spirit. Because there are times you get to a decision that you must make. Amen. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me point to my pastor here because my elder is this side. Praise the Lord. That, so that the decision is made with a balance, with wisdom. Actually, one of the things you are going to look somewhere there is being filled with the Holy Spirit. It transforms your character. Praise the Lord. So I pray God, help me that I reprimand her, that she feel her dignity. It's a feeling of the Holy Spirit. It is not just a mere transformation of raw feeling. It is the Spirit It is not just a mere transformation of rolling in. I'm longing for that feeling of the Holy Spirit, that goes beyond the mere desire of us feeling the emotion. It is deeper. It goes beyond just speaking in tanks. It wants us to say what comes from our mouth, what comes from our thought, what comes from our feeling, and what comes from action. Amen. And God is able to feed our children with wisdom. When we were children long time ago, children are here. One of our teachers came to class, he used to drink a lot, and uh, he was a great disciplinarian, though he was a drunkard. Children are here, I'm giving you this. You can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, this man, when he was dressing, he forgot to, to unzip his zip. And he was a tough man, he could not tolerate anything. So one of our students, I want to believe she was filled with the Holy Spirit, jumped outside the class. She kept on smiling at the gate, and you know, this is a non-tolerant teacher. And the teacher had to go outside and say, teacher, I want you to make yourself up. Look at that wisdom. Praise the Lord. That our children can really communicate a distraction that can put something in perspective. Children can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Our teenagers can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And they can speak sense to us. There are some of us parents who rant a lot particularly if we want to make a decision. When the Holy Spirit pervades, you realize that a kid can bring in perspective. In fact, one kid asked the father, why do you always shout at mama? Although mama would never ask the dad, why do you always shout at me? The feeling of the Holy Spirit. He continuously feels us to make us enjoy fresh power every day. Do not rely on yesterday's feeling. For some of us who are filled with the Holy Spirit during January, this is just a call that we need to desire every day. Lamentation chapter 3, verse 22 to 23 talks about the masses of the Lord never come to an end. They are new every day. 
What it denotes to me is that the feeling of the Holy Spirit every day, God pours fresh anointing on you every day, every hour, and he desire that you feel impacted. Amen. Do not live on the yesterday anointing. God wants you to look ahead. R.T. Kendall has written a book that I would recommend to many of us who like reading. R.T. Kendall is called The Anointing Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. It speaks in three perspectives. That there was a yesterday man that referring to Saul. You know, when Saul realized the anointing was not there, he would get worried. Then he talks about the today's man. And that was Samuel, because Samuel was going to anoint the tomorrow's man, who was David. But Arctic and Dal, in the interpretation of the anointing, which actually denotes the same thing, like what I'm speaking in terms of being filled with the Holy Spirit, he says that actually the anointing is not just the experiential things that we do, but actually a product of the Word of God when it meets with the spirit in a man of God. Amen. And that now takes us ahead and we, many of us who imagine that when the spirit of God is here and then, pastor must be ranting. I've been desiring, you know, you have good towers in doing this. They are new every morning and they are poured out by God. When the comforter comes, we must let him in to reside and live in us. He must come to reside in our, our hearts and preside in our lives. When he resides in us, he gives us the good character of what comes from us. When he presides in us, he tells us the decisions that we do or make. So when he comes to us, he is able to actually affect what is around us. He pervades every sphere. So being in the presence of God will not just be a feeling of us gathering in the church, but it will be us to ask that now that we have Christ in our heart, what is it that is happening around our lives? Amen? <clears throat> what does he come to do? When he comes, the version that we have read is a helper. He helps us to honor God. When we have the Holy Spirit in us, many of us have interpreted being the Holy Spirit as a feeling you feel good. You feel good to have Christ. But it's not for us to enjoy that. It is for us to honor God. And I pray that God will help us to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we may live according to the word of God. Amen? He's a helper. You cannot make it alone. Amen? Many of us are seeking every day that God will help you honor some few things. You cannot do alone. He comes. He comes to remind you because you always forget. He comes to assist you because you cannot do it alone. He comes to teach you all things. That version says that he may teach you all things. Some of you have learned only some things. The Holy Spirit, when he fills us, he teaches us all things. He teaches us temperaments. He teaches us to be able to overcome anger, jealousy, to love God with all heart. This is a work of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Many times, I don't know whether you have ever asked God, how far am I in my spiritual walk? And I want to pause that you reflect that. Because I want to believe all of us have been growing, but none of you can actually say, I have scored 100% of my discipleship. What has God been teaching me? Praise the Lord. We're just having a meeting with the presiding bishop. You know, we believe that bishops should be praying more than the senior pastor, than the council. The bishop said he went to pray. He left his seat and he went. He has another seat just like my seat is arranged. And he realized he was able to roll down there because every time he was praying, God was asking him, pray more. How would the bishop pray more? Because he's longing 
for the move of God. Amen. For many of us who have reached in our discipleship journey, I want to tell you we have not reached. Tell your neighbor we have not reached. When we are growing up and we are looking for ID, you know, we used to be helped by chief. And one man goes to the chief, you know, we used to go after form four. And he says, you know, I have completed school in your mother tongue. I don't know whether you normally say, chief said, you have completed school? Yes. Which class? Form four, you say, you have not completed. You know, we used to say we have completed school. Form four used to complete school. But I realize even people, now they are not completing school. Even professors are going to school. So that chief told us, you have not completed school. So you need to say, actually, you have completed form four. So if we have read the Bible the 30th time, you should not tell us that you have completed reading the Bible. Just say that I've completed my 10th time of reading the Bible, because I'm expecting you to read the 11th time. He will teach you everything that you need to know. Amen? He reminds us of expectations of Christ. You know, Israelites used to forget many times what God expected them. And this is by you having the feeling of the Holy Spirit. The mortar is reminded that Christ expects this from me. And that is a blessing to us. <coughs> when the comforter comes, when the Holy Spirit fills us, he helps us to double our new love for God. We have said this, I shouldn't overemphasize much, that when God is living in us, he desires to ask, how much have I loved other people? How much have I been able to produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit? How much have I been working with God? He wants you to double your new love for God. I'm saying that you double the new because I know you have an old love. Praise the Lord. Buona sue san. Praise the Lord. For some of us who finish paying the dowry, what I'm saying is you need to take another agreement to go and pay something to your mother-in-law. Amen. The new love for God. What it means is another commitment to walk with him, to double the new love for God. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you see things in a different perspective, not the way you used to see them before. It creates great joy, Galatians 5, 16. When the Holy Spirit comes in us, we'll have joy. I know we cannot have joy, particularly if you are a Kenyan. Life has gone up. We have no money. We have no food. We have no jobs. You have less friends. But let me tell you, when the Holy Spirit will fill you, you'll feel happy and have great joy. You'll be able to walk knowing you are with God. It produces other graces of character. What you are saying here is the Holy Spirit, when he comes upon you, he shapes the fruit of the Holy Spirit in you. Peace, patience, love, joy, and all those goodness be able to be produced in your life. It actually produces thanksgiving. Colossians is still just the place where we are saying. We are saying that a thankful heart is a thankful heart. I went to hostel the other day, and I was praying with one of us. But looking around, I realized that every person in that room needed prayer. People were crying in pain. And I said, God, even though I also have some few things that cry, which are not medical, but I want to pray that you help me be thankful. Praise the Lord. Because when you have the Holy Spirit, you actually reach. There are people that are actually battling many things. Things that actually money cannot buy. You get it. You realize you are asking because many of our prayers are actually financial. I don't know why, but uh, many of our prayers, apart from sickness, actually financial is more than this. I want us to count our blessings and name them one by one by being thankful and get filled with the Holy Spirit. Many of us have a lot of stress and I suspect it's because we are not thankful to God. May the God fill our spirit that we become thankful. We become thankful. Statistics show that during COVID, and you know because salaries were reduced and all that, we had a lot of mental illness. And that, I was asking, does lack of money get proportional to the way we do happiness? 
I want to tell you that if we actually allow the infiltration of the Holy Spirit in us, we will be thankful when we will be thankful. Amen? It helps us in power to have power in prayer. This is what we know. I actually, I put it almost the last. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, that's why you see, you think these are men that can lead in prayer. Okay? Because you are able to have power to heal, power to pray for those who um, are dead to resurrect to lives. Through the Holy Spirit, you get courage to speak to things that are difficult to move. And I pray that again, as much as we've been used to this, that let's exercise that and pray that God move in my life, move in my head, move in the life of my children, move in my marriage in the name of Jesus. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you get an extraordinary uh, strength to ask in prayer. This is the time you can sit and I told you that be able to ask the lion Jesus manifest and say, I am able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I desire to have this and that time is gone. I need to move a little bit faster. It gives you power in service. To be filled in the Holy Spirit, it is the only way that you can serve effectively. When the disciples were almost getting to their mission work in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, they said, wait until the Holy Spirit will fill you. And actually for them, they were baptized and they were in faith that day and they desired more. And you read in chapter 2, you see all that they were able to do. It is because when the comforter comes, he's able to help us to be effective. Sometimes maybe we struggle here because maybe we have not been filled. Amen? We are having few servers. Some are not Holy Communion to go to church. Praise the Lord. Our ushers actually are very few. Like now the way we are, we need to collect offering in less than 10 minutes when they walk here. And many of us, God has helped us. I want to believe that you ask God to fill you and see which area of service can you serve in this place. I'm just trying to suspect that maybe why we don't have enough workers is because we have not asked the Holy Spirit. We are always doubting ourselves. May the comforter come that helps, that can help us to serve effectively. We have few counselors. We have few people to go for missions. We have very few people in PPI. Okay? The last time we were in Kimalele, the principal that by then said, if you are not enough for every class, go away. That's what we are told, Teacher Monica, that time. Now, many of us are here, and you don't need actually to be a teacher in Sunday school for you to teach a PPI. You only need to register with a willingness mind. The good thing is we will train you. We will train you, we will give you a material. So you just need to be able to be filled with the Holy Spirit and be able to execute this. I want to suspect why we are not able to serve is because we have not longed for this. What are the three things that hinder our, our infilling of the Holy Spirit or the comforter to come? One is sin. Sin is just defined missing the mark. You need to deal with it. Very good opportunity that we have had even in the presence of God during the Holy Communion that you are given a time to pray that God cleanse me. Pride, being able to think that I am full of this. I have done this and that, you know. Many of you, when you come here to sit, you don't know that God has actually made great men to sit there wherever they sit among you. Um, but we, if you don't deal with, with that, I said in the first service, the pride of humility, you will not experience God. I yeah? am. Because great men are here, they are hungry for God. Many of you, some of you have not known you. I know you are a big man as well. For you to be filled with the Holy Spirit, deal with pride. I know some of you look down on many people. Okay? I keep on reminding you. <coughs> that sometimes when I'm preaching here, I'm humbled to preach to you, including my own professor here. And I tell you that he says, oh, you wonder that he sits here. But the only way up is the way down, humility in the presence of God, able to listen to God, and God will fill you. Because some of us are too full, because if the cup is too full, when will it take more? Let's deal with pride 
in our lives. Deal with the pride of not praying. There are times in some certain places, people think that only children and women should pray. They don't pray. God wants us to pray. Men, we've been told we don't cry, so we cannot be broken before the presence of God. Who was actually getting broken in Psalm chapter 51? This is a king, a man, David. Let's deal with the pride if we want God to ex be able to go with us. Amen? It's the only way to experience you. Sometimes we over rely on flesh. Why flesh can guide you because you use your mind to make judicious decisions. But let's not over rely on our flesh for us to encounter the Spirit of God in our life. I want to conclude because of time. Four things. One is that for you to have the comforter come to your life, you have to allow him to come in the individual lives in our corporate. We open these gates that whoever is willing to experience the presence of God will experience that. The Bible says that I have placed before you an open door that you may be able to enter. No, not to enter. So God gives you an opportunity that you allow him to come. The disciples were to be open for him to come in. Christ does not force himself to us. We have to allow him to come. We must to desire him. In fact, just like the baptism every day, desire and long for him. Psalm chapter 84, the Bible says, and the sons of Korah, they long to be in the presence of God. They always served as gatekeepers, but at one point they desired to be in the presence of God. I was sharing with the women here, and some of you were not women and you're not there. And they decided, I will, maybe we will be like a sparrow. The sparrow is always before the presence of God. They were so desirous and strong. And they think that I wish I was in the worship team, so I would be in the presence of the Lord every day, not knowing that not everyone that stays on here is with him. He was that they were actually longing to be in the presence of God. And they say, the sparrow, the sparrow used to live in the house of God. They say, he's enjoying the Lord. That kind of desire is a good thing when you are in the presence and you desire the feeling of the Holy Spirit. You sanctify yourself in anticipation of his coming. I mean the coming of the Holy Spirit, and I mean again the second coming. Always go every day before God and cleanse yourself. Okay, don't say mungu ni sufficient. There are things that God will cleanse, but there are some that you need to cleanse. Amen? Praise the Lord. Yeah, there are things that you need to do in, in your part. When we are doing the Passover, which is actually similar to the Holy Communion in the Old Testament, the children of Israel were asked to go and wash themselves. There was literal washing of themselves, and they would come before the presence of God in anticipation for the Lord's visit. For us to be in faith with the Holy Spirit, we need to go and deal with our small foxes and be able to come before the presence of the Holy Spirit and he will fill us because Christ and the devil cannot coexist. And then finally, which looks like the five last first one is to let. To let is the similarly to allow. But the thing is, let the comforter come. Let Christ come. Let Christ be re release his, this grace for his presence to be made manifest. There are many of us, I went with one of my friends somewhere in a very highly charged meeting. And by fact that this man did not believe the preacher. When people started speaking in tongues, he started to do like this. He was refusing that the Holy Spirit moves because he was in his own mysterious way. Allow the Holy Spirit to move in many of our aspects, in many of our lives. I want us to bow our heads down as worship team joins us here. And I want us to desire to be in faith with the Holy Spirit. And maybe it's, you may be there and you desire, just come. We want to pray. We want to see the impact of us having Christ in our lives in Jesus' name. That God may move in every of our aspects. We may allow him. We have hindered the Holy Spirit. Many of you say, you know, now I get many of your feedbacks that the greatest hindrance of the move of the Holy Spirit is the church program. Now the senior pastor has preached. We want to open this place for the Holy Spirit to move in Jesus' name. Amen? All of us, let's be upstanding 
and you are desirous of God, just come. We want to openly be open to the move of the Holy Spirit in this place. Reverend Petronila will be here shortly to be able to do a benediction. You are there, you are desirous. The pulpit is open. No longer the kind of the AOBs and email say the program is hindering us to experience the presence of God. Amen. As we get that song and you are desirous, today we are praying for the move of the Holy Spirit. Nothing more. And we pray God will move in our midst in Jesus' name. Amen.